am very, very highly recommending Think Nimble because of the culture alignment. We had someone from our network who's been a friend and mentor advisor sit in on a couple calls that we've had with Think Nimble recently. And we got off the call and debriefed after the last one we had. And they were like, it just seems like it's really easy to work with Think Nimble. I'm like, yeah, because the culture alignment's so good. And I think it just validates when you find someone who does the work the way that you think the work should be done, that's it's rare. <laughs> so it's, it's certainly something that, that I'd recommend if people are in that moment of their startup or they're looking to build tech in the right way. I was an architecture geography student in school, so I've always been a big fan of creating places and spaces that make people think that has given me a lot of structure and the things that I like to do, whether it's creating games or building experiences that people find memorable, that brings me a lot of joy. I was also a very good golfer growing up. So I was a professional golfer for about five, six years and enjoyed that childhood dream. I took my experience of seeing the world through this lens of play and design, architecture, geography, combined it together and created a few initiatives. One does a lot of team and culture building uh, for teams called Barometer XP. And we've done a little bit of work with ThinkNimble and it's been really fun to think about how tech can support that and how can you create something that's both elegant but also meaningful has been a really fun way to, to work together. About six months before the pandemic, a bunch of folks both in organizational design and game design got together and said there should be a way to make culture and team building, both fun and effective. People have figured out team bonding, whether it's like going to a ball game or escape room or some you know cooking class that you might do with your, your team. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have that like deep reflection time to think about how you can create behavior change in organizations. Barometer started as a concept of Let's use play and games and these playful spaces as a simulation or a mirror space for work. And what can you learn playing a game that you can apply to work? We got going, started working with clients, built a philosophy and theory of play that we weave throughout. And then about a year later, the pandemic hit <laughs> and we started thinking, how can we support this whole future of work movement? We continue doing services, mostly online. And about a year and a half into that, we were like, all right, we've built a lot of really great insights. How can we support the other service providers in the space? There are a lot of consultants in the world, but they all go into working with teams in some way. They go and they, they run sessions or they run workshops or they do trainings. Some of them are done well, but there are a lot of people looking to improve that tool in their tool belt. We started building a product that takes that philosophy that we have and way that we do service work um, with our own clients and teams and giving that as a tool for other people to use. As you start up any business and we're a three-person company at Barometer with a handful of either fractional folks or people that support us in different ways, I would say the startup culture is relatively toxic, really strips away work-life balance because of mm -hmm. all of the things you need to do. To do them well, a company needs eight to 10 people cover all of the various things you're doing. And if you're starting up as two, three individuals and you want to do all of those things well, guess who gets to do them? Very adept at legal matters and startup governance and how to build a sales pipeline and market your services and everything that you need to do to build the thing and sell the thing and manage the people that own the thing. It's a big ask. I think at a big level, the startup culture is very challenging to do something really well. What you want to be closer to perfect and what you're okay being less perfect for now, knowing you can always improve. That's certainly been one big challenge with startups. And then I think on the more practical business growth side, selling services or a product uh, is difficult. It's a, a really interesting space that I don't particularly enjoy, but I do really enjoy making an impact on people. So trying to frame what you're doing as something that people will want 
and helping them understand <laughs> this is something I want. And it's yeah. not just like this slimy guy who's coming to pitch me yeah. something that's never going to work. When a culture of two companies is pretty well aligned, it makes it really fun. And there seems to be like almost an inertia. It's more of a similar philosophy on how you want to run a business. Mm -hmm. I've always been really excited about of how Think Nimble thinks about culture or how they're pushing the box and not necessarily conforming to what is the norm. Seeing some of those insights to be like, this is how we want our team to work. And when you see that in a culture, it's hopefully contagious for in, inside the organization, but all the organizations that Think Nimble works with, I would hope that that carries over a bit too. And for us, I think I would say the same thing. You see a, a positive culture and you're like, all right, this, this can be done. I don't think it is a huge stretch to recognize why as a culture-based company, why you would want to bring in folks like Think Nimble or any other vendor contracting firm who believes in the same things. We've done a couple different projects and I think each one has helped us understand the process and the purpose of tech. It's not just a like, wire here to here it's knowing how good that wire is and like how long is it going to last and how flexible is it if suddenly this thing comes in and breaks one side where the wires connect it really thinking about the system i love meta answers but there's also a practical one which is you had a need you built the thing and now it works but i think for me it's again startup team of three needs to figure out like all things under the sun and you go into a project like I want to build this game. We worked on a game app together with Think Nimble. The process itself, I really enjoyed as a systems thinker. I can read code, but I can't write it. It's like learning mm -hmm. a foreign language. Like I understand the system and what's happening, and I can see it play out in my mind. And I've gotten pretty uh, pretty good at using low code tools to create something. Working with a group like Think Nimble or <clears throat> in, in the software development mind of all right, has gotten us thinking, all right, if we do want to build this thing well, we need to spend this much more time, this much more dollars, th this much more just effort in creating something that's really good. So that's been really interesting to just think about. Obviously, as a small startup, you don't have a ton of funds. And so that can be scary to hear this project's going to take <laughs> a lot and you don't necessarily have the funds. Is it even worth engaging with a firm? And to that, I would say engage in a scoping project. This is the thing that we've started to do now. Again, with Think Nimble is we've got a bigger project that we see on the horizon that we're like, this thing is humongous. We've done a project with Think Nimble before, and we recognize that with the budget we have, that thing on the horizon is way, way big. How do we scope it effectively and make sure that we're doing the project that's critical? Any group going through this process of building something in tech should have that scoping conversation and should have a really good understanding of why they should not stretch beyond the scope. <laughs> because as soon as it does, like you, you can see how that creeps across the project and you suddenly get something that's very watered down, right? Sometimes it takes experience to see that. I'd like to think that founder who's really thinking about their time and dollars that they have to spend will use that scoping moment as a directional support system that's been really helpful with think nimble is just to you know have someone who's thinking about the process as we don't want to just like sell a service to sell a service we want this whole thing and relationship to be solid we're going to tell you when you are asking for too much we are in fundraising mode right now we can build the company in two different ways we could go to service a lot of clients bring in the revenue use that revenue build a thing or we could go find investment, use that investment, build a thing. I think we're trying to blend a bit of both, become that thought leader in the team and culture development space and know that we can acquire clients when we're looking for them to showcase to people who are using this product, play engagements this way. If you use these tools in the right order, process, acquire or obtaining uh, an engagement, um, you'll be more effective. The show rather than tell approach is worthwhile for us to pursue. Thinking about how can we build a small clientele that we're, you know, creating relationships with that are on that longer term scale, not just the one-off workshop, but the, you know, multi-term engagement is, is good for our revenue. It's good for being able to build something 
behind the scenes that can help other people. And so I think 12 months from now, um, trying to really lean into the funds that we've acquired, whether it's through services or fundraising, to dig into those things that are breaking at the product level. And we've had recent conversations about at what point do we estimate that the break is going to occur? And that's a really helpful way of thinking about prioritizing next steps. For us, it's a payment portal problem. Like we use a clunky system that's built through Wix. It has a bunch of integrations, but we aren't technologists. So we have a very particular way that we've set that up. And we know that like at 50 customers, it's going to be a nightmare to manage. We know that as soon as we hit that breaking point, we should really be calling on Think Nimble and a tech partner to help us think about how do you automate this in a way that, again, doesn't remove quality, but it allows an individual to oversee more customers at a time. Mm -hmm. And now you can start to see a scale of a business because one person is able to oversee 200 people versus 50. And now you can justify a contract or a employment of that person. I think it's picking and choosing our battles of what we're improving step-by-step step, bringing in the tech partner and the expertise to support that journey. Eventually we'll get to a point where we might have some in-house person, right? But we still may lean on something, a group like Think Nimble to help structure where we're headed next. We've talked about Think Nimble as your mini chief technology officer. And I think that role is a very helpful role for a, for a startup that's building a tech product and doesn't have a tech founder. I think part of it was wanting to have your own sovereign product game that you could roll out at any time. It also just so happened to be very well connected to our philosophy. We built it around our framework. It hit two birds with one stone. The best thing that came out of that project, even though it wasn't, it didn't get quite to the finished level that I think we wanted it to just, it was both time and money at some point where we're like, wow, this is a huge project. And like, why did we take a, such a big swing? But I think going through it helped us create um, a more nimble version of the game, a more like synthesized way of explaining our philosophy. And it like really helped us drive deeper into how we explain this. Um, and we've been able to use it effectively in a number of different ways. Building it at the time that we did felt like the right decision. But I can tell you right now, if we had the funds from that project today, we would probably put them in a very different place because we see tech in a very different way. So it was a very good learning experience for us because I think we came to the project with a very big scope. And now thinking back on it, it became a very good learning moment for us. We've been able to use it. I'm very, very highly recommending Think Nimble, again, because of the culture alignment. And we had someone from our network who's been a friend and mentor advisor sit in on a couple calls that we've had with Think Nimble recently. And we got off the call and debriefed after the last one we had. And they were like, it just seems like it's really easy to work with Think Nimble. And I'm like, yeah, because the culture alignment's so good. And I think it just validates when you find someone who does the work the way that you think the work should be done, that's, it's rare. <laughs> so it's, it's certainly something that, that I'd recommend if people are in that moment of their startup or they're looking to build tech in the right way.